Can you give an example of a challenging agile transformation you facilitated and how you navigated the hurdles to achieve success? Not in 10 minutes, no. Um, so I've been involved in, in, in many, some successful, some less so. Um, and I'm not going to talk to particulars and specifics because my clients would stop being my clients if I went down that route. Right? But we see common patterns. Okay? Many transformations in the agile world, well, they used to surface up from engineering and development and you know, the techie folk. Nowadays, we're seeing more and more leadership bringing this forward. And that is a great step forward. It's not enough, but it's a great step forward because the biggest hurdles that we face are invariably cultural, their policy, their leadership. Okay? I'm not saying the leaders are the problem, though in my experience that does happen. I'm saying the leaders are the people who can affect this change the best. Right? If we can create teams that are really agile, they're using their frameworks, their tools, their techniques to great effect, at some point, they're just gonna hit a ceiling. They're gonna hit boundaries within their organization that they have no influence over, that they can't affect in any way, shape or form. As Scrum Masters, as Agile Coaches, we then go out and we work with the people who can make those differences. And we extend outwards across an organization and slowly we start moving upwards because what we need to do is help people understand their decisions have impacts many times removed from where they see it. I've worked with people who genuinely sit there and think I made this change and it's fixed this problem. And they have no idea about how it's impacted the rest of the organization because that wasn't in their thinking. This isn't good or bad. It just is. I'm here to fix this problem and I fix this problem. Great. What about all this carnage that you just caused? Not my problem. I fixed my problem. We as agile coaches need to be going out and working with those leaders, helping them understand what could happen. We're not telling them what to do. And this is an important difference to what you come across with many consultancies, they will say what's right. Good agile coaches will help leaders explore, okay? And then make a decision founded on a better understanding of the space. One of the key tools that I use is system modeling or causal loop diagrams. Just asking them when they're gonna do something that I believe is a bit daft, I want them to explain it. And as they talk, I will draw out very often on a table in front of us, on a bit of paper, if they don't have whiteboard tables, or remotely, we'll do it on one of the tools online. And I'll start sketching out, what are all these variables and how do you see them relating? And things going up and down, changing, so that they've got their picture. This is my thinking. And it's often very, very complex. There's lots of moving parts. There's lots of to's and fro's and interrelated things. And, it's often not complete because they know 100% of what they do. They see the world through their lens. I see it through my lens. I see it based on the experiences of their organization that I've had, people that I talk to who may or may not overlap with the people they talk to. So I'm going to continue that conversation saying it's very interesting. It's probably a very insightful approach and overlay my thinking. We're going to talk about these are the things that I can see happening the good and the bad. I always try and stay balanced. Decisions are rarely themselves good or bad. They just are. It's the consequences. And there's always good and bad out of both. It's just whether the good outweighs the bad. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to add my own ideas and present them. This is the conversation mapped out. Yeah. It creates these reinforcing cycles. It creates these balancing loops. Overall, do you feel that your decision is going to deliver the intended outcome without the detriment to other areas. And if they do, brilliant, go ahead. And they might just ignore me and that's okay because I've done my job. I've raised their awareness. I've helped them understand my concerns from the agile world, from my experience. They know their job. They know what they need to do. They're not necessarily going to articulate everything to me openly and honestly. And that's okay. They make the calls. They make the decisions. I'm there to advise them, to support them in that process. 
And this is what we see. When we get this conversation working with leaders, okay, then all the work that's done at the team levels really pays off. I love being able to point to this is how Agile works in your organization at the coalface. You can see these teams doing amazing things and you can support them by making decisions that support their ways of working, that support their ways of thinking. So this is where very often transformations succeed or not, is do the leaders not only buy into it, but become actively involved in it and potentially even drive it forward? Are they willing to take on conversations about policy, about process, about structure, about culture, ultimately? Are they willing to shift their culture to be one that is agile? I don't mean big A agile, I mean responsive, responsible, adaptive. Success is often bound up in that. Agile transformations are often thought as an engineering problem or a development problem or a product problem. In truth, they're an organizational issue. Do you, as a company, want to change your foundational DNA? The companies that have wanted to do that and have committed to do that at all levels succeed in some way, shape or form. Those who don't, who believe that it's just gonna work down here, will probably create very good teams who become frustrated and leave. And with them leaving, the transformation fails.